Welcome to the Inspired Evolution. And today, today, in this moment, it's not even a treat. It is a blessing to be with you, brother. Welcome, Paolo Arlotta. Paolo, how are you? I'm very good, man. <laughs> Thanks for having me here. And um, I'd like to express my gratitude and deep honor to be here. Oh, it's so such an important thing for me to be here as it represents, like, it's been the year of closing circles <laughs> and uh, it kind of represents a closure of another big circle for me and uh, so mm. thanks so much and oh. thanks also for your work and keep inspiring all of us <laughs> this <laughs> amazingness and all these beautiful humans you had before me so it's mm. really thanks so much all that. that has culminated into this moment in time mm. <laughs> to have you as a beautiful human here sharing with us it is um yeah, thank you so much for reflecting that back to me. It is such a um, it's such a special episode for me to have such a dear friend, brother, um, come on and have this conversation. And um, where it's really going to go, I have no idea. Same which is here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is which is one of the which is one of the the highlights almost for today for me. Um, for those tuning into Palo for the first time, I guess what is most glaringly obvious is the amazing work that you do around chefing and the work and cooking is and the oh, just the amazing food <laughs> that is there. Um, but the thing that really speaks to me behind that is obviously the dharma and the walk and the spirituality that is informing, you know, to me that is a symptom of the incredible, incredible nourishment that comes through in the food that you create. As an Indian <laughs> that grew up in a kitchen, I'm very biased, like extremely biased to loving food. And then your food in particular just, you know, is amazing everywhere. Everyone that receives it has nothing but appraisers to sing for it. Um, so I think on a, on a surface level, that's kind of what you can see. But as I was uh, uh, iterating behind it, it's kind of the walk, the person that is behind that, that is infusing just – so much work on themselves, you know. Um, I definitely feel this kinship in our relationship in that there is this inspired evolution that, you know, I'm on the journey with in effect of. But also, you know, <laughs> you're in a T-shirt too, you know. It's just like we, <laughs> we're we on this journey together, you know. Um, and so it's really special to have you here today. I guess, you know, in the spirit of just trying to make some sense of the episode, which, you know, rarely for those that are tuning in, you know, I often say this, my episodes are very chop suey, top down, whichever way it goes around. Um, but what kind of, what brought you to food in the first place? Oh, there's a very long journey. Yeah, um, tell us in a nutshell. <laughs> well, my food journey... Um, started very randomly actually when i first decided in 2006 mm. to finally leave my country mm. uh, in search of something more yeah uh, i come from a small town of 7000 people all lovely people but of course as you can imagine like the views and the, the minds are not as open mm. and um as i progress with the years and uh, thanks to my mom and her initiation in spirituality i always felt i needed something more mm -hmm. and um i decided to just leave uh, at the time i was a university student i was studying uh, politics and ah, economics in italy no in way italy. <laughs> yes. and, i've um, seen some of these parliament like filmings it like gets pretty fiery <laughs> pretty fiery <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so i decided just to leave quit my job uh, quit uni because I was studying and working at the same time um, and just leave um, for London, for mm. the UK. Yeah. Um, my English was terrible and uh, the only job I could find was a uh, kitchen porter, so a dish, like yeah. uh, the kitchen pig or however you want to call it. Um, and uh, yeah, the first time I entered in the kitchen was falling in love straight away. Like <laughs> I remember, I still remember all the chefs, all the noises, the smells. It was just a spell, you know. Yeah. And um, I knew already that there was going to be something that would accompany me for not the rest of my life, but for at least a big part of it. And um, mm. from then, um, from there, I after a year, I came back to Italy. And because, um, of course, I wanted to know a little bit more about the food in my own country and you know i had some amazing teachers and, and chefs that taught me 
all they could. And uh, I was I've actually been always quite lucky with finding uh, mentors and teachers throughout my existence. Helps a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but after two years, um, if you can allow me to tell the whole story, yeah, please. Um, so. My interest in spirituality through my mom that was doing a lot of studies uh, around Jewish Kabbalah mm. started, you know, growing a little bit. And um, also um, this this thing, this bug in, inside me, just traveling bug, mm. start growing, growing. And, and I, I knew that London was just the beginning of a very long journey. And um, I remember it. I don't know if I ever told you this one, but I remember um, going to a concert of Lenny Kravitz. Oh, and, yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I remember um, at the time I was starting playing the guitar, mm. um, and I remember uh, mom being excited about me going to this concert, so she decided to go to the second date that was avail- available. And uh, when she came back home, she was so thrilled. You know, mom, she has always been like a house kind of, Person, person, yeah, you know? and uh, she used to see she she would sing this song "Fly Away," which is a very famous song uh, of Lenny Kravitz. I want to get, get away. away. Yeah, yeah. So I decided, thanks God, to <laughs> learn this song on the mm. um, on the guitar. Yeah, for mom and for me, and, and also I was resonating with the song "Flying mm. Away," going somewhere. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's beautiful now understanding all those little subtleties yeah. with a, with a more open mind Looking because at that time I couldn't I w- would follow the signals but I wouldn't really understand why the song why the Drops meaning in. Yeah. yeah it's amazing that one of my favorite quotes is a Steve Jobs quote no where he goes uh, looking back the dots all line up. Every single dot is perfectly exactly. in line. But when you're in it, exactly. it's like, what? Is, right. what is, why? What? No. Yeah. But yeah, you were saying this. Yeah. Song. So I jumped on YouTube because I'm I'm self taught guitar player. Yeah. Very yeah. inspiring, by uh, the way. <laughs> and uh, I found the first video that came came up uh, to me was this video of this Asian girl mm. performing an acoustic version of the song. Yeah. And as soon as I played that video something magic happened uh, i was drawn into the person into the energy it was like magical like mm. and for days and days i kept playing the song and um on the youtube video but also trying to emulate you know, and i could stop music. thinking about this person you know um, there was so much strength so much freedom in in her singing and it's in her in her voice Whew. So I decided to get in contact with it just to express gratitude and you know like <laughs> yeah. how much it meant, even just a simple video like that. And um, eventually we started chatting and um, we became good friends. Mm-hmm. And um, and it went on for months and mm-hmm. months and months uh, until the day I decided to travel through India. Yeah, uh, that was my first trip outside of Europe, very far from Europe. Why uh, India of all places? Um, a very inspiring brother um, wo- wo- was there the year before, uh-huh. and um, as he has been like a very strong figure and inspiration for myself mm-hmm. from my own town. But was one of the only ones that get out of the town. So for me, it's always been, you know, um, very inspiring. Mm-hmm. So I decided to just gather a few information from here, but then just buy one way ticket uh, to <laughs> India, and. Um, yeah, I end up staying three months. Yeah, nice. Uh, around that, around that time, uh, three of those months were, uh, sorry, three weeks of those three months were in an ashram mm. in Rishikesh, where I first encountered yoga mm. without even knowing what yoga was. <laughs> and um, there was another click moment in my life. And mm. uh, on the way back uh, to Europe, I stopped uh, in London to meet this person. Mm. Uh, there was per- she is a musician, so she was performing at the time in London. And um, if I have to be super frank and honest with you, when we met, we just fell in love. <laughs> um, so one month after, I was on a plane to Singapore to ah. meet this person and live with this person. And yeah, uh, yeah so 
the, the, that's the first part of the trip and mm. of course of the journey the second part is, is Australia our home mm. um, but yeah it's unbelievable how a concert and my mom without that concert and without my mom yeah. singing the song now I wouldn't be here and yeah. if I wouldn't listen to my guts and inspired so strongly by this woman mm. I wouldn't be here now I, it's something every day not every day but when I think about it I Man, this is magic, pure magic. No? Yeah. It's totally. unbelievable. So, um, um, what was the first, how we started all this? Oh, I was the asking food, about your the journey food. and the yeah, food and how yeah. it came to. So, you're in Singapore now. Yeah. And then you said that was part one. Of course, throughout this journey, um, uh, at, the, at the point I was uh, hardly working, uh, I was hard, hard working as a chef in fine dining establishments. So, yeah. at the time, uh, my cooking was all about fine dining and, you know, um, which I didn't understand at the time how toxic was for my ego because mm. uh, if you're not well balanced and at the time I wasn't uh, fine dining and can be quite damaging for uh, for the person you know? right. so um, yeah through, throughout this journey through India Singapore and Italy and then here in Australia I've been chefing through, uh, into a lot of uh, very famous restaurants around the world. Mm -hmm. Again, having a lot of good teachers mm -hmm. and uh, good mentors in the kitchen. Some of the best restaurants in the world, some may say. <laughs> yeah, yeah yes, it was. And, but I'm still super grateful. I learned mm -hmm. uh, the value of hardworking, uh, discipline, you know, um, resilience. It was great, a great mm -hmm. experience and so grateful to all those, those restaurants, those chefs that have been inspired me mm -hmm. um, throughout the journey. Um, it just, uh, I just arrived to a point uh, after a few years where uh, I understood that it wasn't my life purpose. Mm. Um, and almost pa in a parallel um, walk, uh, my passion for fine dining, but not for food, was diminishing and my spirituality was growing mm. uh, throughout yoga mostly and uh, breath work and a little bit of meditation at the beginning. Mm. It was more like a physical practice, a way for me to escape uh, from the stress and the hours and the tension in, in the body, in the mind, mm -hmm. the fragmentation of the mind, the uh, chef life can mm -hmm. cause. Because I, 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 rem I can remind you that at the time, the um, mental health uh, issues wasn't really spread out. In, in <laughs> the conversation was not being had. No, at all. It was a taboo. Uh, so working 60, 70, 80, sometimes... I did a lot of 90 hours a week mm. was normal mm. and you couldn't if you would you know address the issues you would have been you know black sheep yeah exactly yeah. Or, you know named as a not a man or mm. all those things that I like to discuss later maybe in the podcast um, this toxic uh, machoism that is so present in mm. was so present in kitchens but still is in mm. a little bit Especially in Australia, things are changing in the in the positive. But things are changing. Let's yeah. talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Or did you let's let's tie out your story and then we'll talk about the yeah. And we can finish it after if you want. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the yeah. toxic masculine, uh, the toxic uh, environment in fine dining? Because I've got a background in, in hospitality. Like I said, I grew up in a restaurant, um, and. Yeah, in many ways, it brings me closer to you. <laughs> um, but that's because I lead with my stomach. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing was, and I'm just going to be completely transparent just because it's you and I here, mm. but I once I left my parents' establishment to go work in other establishments to garnish and gather more skills and more of an acumen in this space, I started realizing that there are, you know, and I'm, and I'm sure this is not the only toxicity that you're talking about, but especially in this culture, in this country, there's a lot of chefs on drugs. Mm. Like mm. there's a lot of chefs on drugs. And when you think about it, it's not like a, you know, it's almost, it's almost like a, like the same sort of epidemic that exists with truck drivers, right? Because the, you're on your own doing your own task. There's no one around. Like when you're doing your meal prep, you've basically got all this time to yourself. No one else is in the kitchen. It's just you, your music, and you're doing what you need to do. Um, and something about, I find about hospitality and something my dad actually said to me really early on was, you know, people used to say, you, you know, is your son going to take over the establishment when, you know, 
you retire? And he said, no, I worked hard so he could work smart. You know, that was his <laughs> That was his thing. And he impregnated that really early on because the dialogue there is that when the rest of the world is enjoying themselves, you are then engaged in service. Exactly. You know? And service is a conversation I'd love to have with you. But in this space, it's like this really interesting dynamic is that, you know, People are unwinding and you're there to cater to their unwinding. Mm. Yeah, they're like, they're, they're done with their day. They're going to the bar or they're going for a meal. They're just decompressing and you're there in service. When are you going to unwind? Yeah. And so generally what happens is on a Friday or a Saturday night, you end up unwinding after everybody else is unwound. <laughs> yeah. And the energetics behind that, you know, is like a whole other conversation we can oh, have now. Yeah. And you're unwinding perhaps even everybody else's unwindings. I'm not mm. sure. Like I'm speculating now, but do you know what I mean? Like all that. Mm. is unwinding and then before you realize it you're sitting with a six pack of beers let's just say if you're you know alcohol inclined and it's 4 a.m in the morning mm. you know you closed up shop at like mid midnight it's it's very common for it to be 4 a.m in the morning but as you know between 12 and 4 you know the night creatures <laughs> are not the same as the day creatures so it's not just alcohol that you end up interacting with other drugs come into them and then this becomes like the culture around hospitality mm. which can be you know, so uh, challenging to navigate. And I think one thing that's really present for me in your story was, you know, you got to, when you got to a kitchen, even as a dish pig, you were like, nah, there's something here. And I do want to ask you first, like at some point, like how did you know that there was something here? Because most people are transiting through hospitality. Like mm-hmm. they get there, yep, I'll, I'll do the dishes and then I'll use this to get to where I need to go to. And it's a very transitory sort of space. Very few people these days look at hospitality as being like a grounded sort of thing for them. Um, but fundamentally, like in that transitory experience as well, you know, it's like people are coming and going and it's it's this these toxic things that sort of exist in this climate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I – now with the with – at 35 years old man eyes, I can I can see that uh, when I entered the kitchen at the time in London, surely the the structure and the discipline was something I needed in my life, mm. um, like a direction. Yep. Um, but also uh, throughout my existence since early days, um, being a very creative mm. child, a very creative teenager. And uh, I always needed to feed this creativity mm. within me. And uh, food is so creative. Mm. You have infinite combinations of flavors. And, you know, um, a lot of people have as prefer- uh, favorite su- um, senses, usually sight and hearing for mm. me is touching and taste. Mm. Like those are my two uh, senses I really resonate with. Yeah. Uh, so f- food is all about. You know, prepping food, especially touching, using your hands, uh, putting your energy into food, and mm. and of course, tasting is the source of every pleasure that comes from food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that was the main reason, and uh, um, tying on the on the situation in kitchens nowadays. Yes, uh, you know, completely true uh, in what you're saying. Um, I like to. Though, um, make a point on a lot of restaurants, especially fa- some fine dining uh, around the world, like mm. really putting a lot of effort in making a change mm. and with great results. And yeah. uh, in the US, in Brazil, UK, and even especially here in Australia, there is mm. a lot more moving on. A lot of restaurants are having meditations, classes, mm. which we can then um, connect chefs with you again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the hours are less. There mm. are less chefs that you know insult each other. Mm. Uh, sustainability is is present is a must nowadays. So mm. things are changing. Yeah, like that. and so when you say things are changing, you noticed a shift and a change, okay. and that's what inspired chefs of yoga, or you noticed challenges in the space, and that's what inspired chefs of yoga. There's there's the way, there's a thing. Um, chefs of yoga came from a need to um, give back actually uh, to my community so I've always been um, a bit scared of sharing if I have to be honest with you mm. this is why today is so important for it's me. such a blessing to have um, you I've been trying to make this happen for a while let's just say that <laughs> you know I never I as a, I was a pretty insecure kid and you know and uh, it's amazing to see how 
my confidence, my self love is built over the years exponentially. Mm. Like year by year is you know yeah. um, every circle around the sun has been better than the previous one. Yeah. And there's a promise I made myself a few years ago that every year has to be better than the other one. That's you know? amazing. Um, or at least make me feel better. Mm. You know, what I did, what I shared and uh, um, sharing, you know, was always a big issue because I, the self-worthiness it wasn't there. So, um, Chefs of Yoga was my first step into me sharing uh, what I had to offer. And mm. uh, yoga has been like a big, big game changer in my life and mm. helped me so much in in, in my chef chefing. You know, mm. Even when I was working, yeah. Explain um, this because it doesn't seem like that makes a lot of sense you mm. know, to those that are listening in. It's like, oh yeah, I'm a chef, but yoga helped me a lot in my life. So some yeah. people that are listening in, they're regular listeners, they get the energy. Yeah. But like, tell us more about so what since, do you mean by that. Uh, since you know, I came back from India, like um, I started practicing yoga, even mm. if I was working the, those many hours. So because uh, I used to have at least one day off every yeah. week. So that day off would have been spent uh, a fair bit in, the, in, the, in a yoga studio. Yeah. And um, as I was saying before, um, after uh, I quit fine dining, I started working in cafes or having a little bit more freedom. Mm. My yoga practice, um, the days I was spending doing yoga were always more and more and more until then became a daily practice. Mm. And then... Uh, um, that helped me so much in my chefing, um, you know, with efficiency, with uh, concentration, focus, uh, the way I was reacting to stressful situations. Mm. Um, and, you because know, it can be very stressful. It right? can be very stressful, but yeah. I eventually learned that I didn't need to unwind after the shift because mm. I could unwind as I was cooking. Mm. But when you stop feeding your ego, cooking food and thinking, oh my God, I need to make this the best meal ever. When you start cooking with the with the belief that you're cooking to make people happy, mm. all of a sudden it doesn't feel like such a, a stress yeah. you know, you're know, you doing for the people, yeah. you know? And that's when my work didn't become my work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, every day it goes by and I feel I'm not working. Yeah. I'm just doing what I like to do. <laughs> you know? And um, finally, um, well, we can talk about the herbivorous nights after we we'll skip on the on the yoga thing. And um, I finally decided to um, take a yoga teacher training mm. uh, in the yoga studio. I've been practicing for years. And um, in during the, the, the course, mm. uh, I had this revelation through one of the teachers that, you know, maybe I could help chefs, uh, some chefs, the, the one they're keen to, to mm. have the same experience I had and maybe make a small change in the in the industry. Yeah. Know? And because uh, one of my biggest belief is, um, I, th I think you heard this, that, you know, to make a big change, we don't need one person mm. to do it perfectly, yeah. but we need a lot of people doing not perfectly. So I thought that maybe if I can change or help, the shift in uh, as many mm. people as possible. So in a broader audience, there could be, as can be hospitality, maybe the change will, the impact of the change will be higher than, you know. Um, yeah, uh, it's such a subtle thing, but it's such a massive point that you mm. should. It's like, we think that we need to be perfect in order to go and share our gifts so that it can be like the best inspiration, the best thing that it can be. But the reality is, you'll be waiting for the rest of your life and maybe then some because yeah. nothing is perfect, right? And so taking the time and the energy to just realize, actually, wherever I am, I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got. And let me just take that and apply that to the best of my ability. Um, I think that's really profound. And I think it's really incredible just how you've, yeah, like seen – Obviously, now it makes a lot of sense for those that are tuning in with the Inspired Evolution as to why, like, Paolo is here because obviously he's walking a walk with offering yoga, offering food, and nothing really feels like work, right? It's like, I love doing this and I love doing this. And the Inspired Evolution, when it first set out, was to live the life that you love, right? And so in that space, like, it's an absolute, you know, walking by your side on this journey has been a real inspiration to watch someone that can embody that and also still continue to learn how to, like, iterate upon all that work that is in that space. So with the 
with the yoga offerings, you've brought that back to community. I find it really inspiring that you actually see the community of chefs as your community, mm-hmm. you know, because I often find a lot of people, especially like, you know, doing the work that I do for mindfulness, a lot of people are disconnected on a very fundamental level. And even within the same industries, like I walk into a bank to guide meditations or I walk into a construction site to guide meditations, the word around community, as in like they don't see themselves as a community, they mm-hmm. see themselves as individuals transacting with an organization. They're all organized within the organization, mm-hmm. but they don't see themselves as a community. But you actively see yourself as part of this community of people that are invested in food. Yeah, I, I do because it's a, com- it's a community that gave me so much mm. uh, and uh, I want to honor that uh, with, with my offering. Mm. Um, on what you said, yes, uh, but also like the bonds that you form in a kitchen or in a restaurant mm. are usually very very strong, mm. uh, especially when you work on the same la- in, on the same section. and. Uh, so it is like a little community within a broader community, mm. um, and also like as I was saying, the the shifting in the in the hospitality world is more about communities, um, yeah. more and more. So in fact, is why pop up dinners the one around they can thrive so easily. Or yeah, the collaboration there so uh, possible so cool nowadays yeah, because yeah. it's all about community. You mm. know the relationship that now we have with farmers with the uh, suppliers you know so the the bonds are are tighter and um, with the op- a more open minded community can can be formed so mm. but i understand your point of view on the the closure and but i think the shift is 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 happening. happening that's yeah. amazing yeah. and so you're contributing to that share that connection with chefs of yoga so was part of the energy of moving into chefs of yoga what gave birth to herbivorous nights or was it already are they linked are they in any way mm. or is it just another offering another creation part mm. of your creativity what yeah. what happened there well at first uh, just shine a little bit of light on the chefs of yoga offering mm. just for the people who listen Clarity, yeah. um, so the chefs of yoga brings your classes to restaurants mm. on a weekly basis and offer uh, one-to-one uh, uh, your classes with some chefs uh, mm. that might be still too skeptical to join a wider group or mm-hmm. an open class and plus uh, we run um, community classes yeah which have free access mm-hmm. uh, close the brackets herbivorous nights um, herbivorous nights and chefs of yoga are not linked yeah um, herbivorous night is the perfect representation of my life and mm-hmm. values uh, which um, is lived um, with the value of balance uh, mm. so a uh, reverse night is a monthly pop-up event where i work many hours and um, but um, i really enjoy it mm. and um is my way to um how can i say it offer to yeah to offer like a well the ve- vegetarian part of it is the the main thing mm. um, um I, as a vegetarian, so I've been vegetarian for 12 years now. Mm-hmm. And um, as a vegetarian, I always struggle to go out and have some good food. Yeah. Uh, at, yeah. So, because there are not many chefs that have a fine dining background that are into cooking Even vegetarian. Vegetarian food. only. Yeah. Even their things are moving a little bit, but um, I decided that I wanted to offer this to mm-hmm. people so we could definitely have like a. Um, are good enough options to mm. even for meat eater, which are the people I, I want the most yeah. to show them that you know vegetarian food can, can be, be delicious. Yeah. It can be like, dude, it's ridiculous. <laughs> delicious but still healthy, you know. Yeah. So um, one of my core points in my cooking is yes, the food has to be delicious, but mm. also has to be um, nutritious mm. and not not unhealthy yeah. uh, has to be cooked with love and good intentions mm-hmm. and uh, also um, needs to offer a good environment for the people who work with me which mm-hmm. are uh, value so much yeah. because my nights will be nothing without all the, the co-worker, co-workers yeah. so yeah um, the dinners have been going on for a while mm-hmm. in Australia and now also abroad um, and yeah it's a blessing to be able to keep having people coming and coming again so a lot of customers they keep coming back and uh, 
that means doing something that works. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in awe of these Adobe's Nights because you're basically offering exactly what you want to offer. There's no one that has to tell you what the menu has to be. You get to, as you said, make it healthy, make it vegetarian, make it locally sourced, get whatever is that is organic to the best of your ability as well. So all these different conversations that you want to have with people that you can't sit down and now we have the opportunity in a podcast to have this conversation, but you don't always get to. You get to go, here's a plate that talks to my values, to my energy, and the conversations I'd like for you to have, and you bring that together. And you get to do that once a month without, and this is where the entrepreneurial journey sort of flags itself for me, without having to invest in a bricks and mortar. Yeah, like like you don't have like a bricks and mortar, like a like a space, you know. It's just like, yep, we can find a little pop-up space, do a pop-up dinner, and it'll be amazing. And I really love Melbourne's culture for that as one Melbourne. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Melbourne is like such a bedrock of creativity. Yeah. And it's such an amazing place for things like this to emerge. Um but yeah, I think for me that's that's really incredible that that has been there. So, a question I've got through this thread is: you're on your journey, you find yourself chefing, yoga speaks to you, you know, and the passion you said sort of passion around food comes down a little bit, and the spirituality increases a little bit, you know. And it's like, okay, cool. Now I'm going to go on this yoga journey. And then you go on this yoga journey, and you realize food is an epic community that has meant so much to you. You bring yoga back to them, and then through there, you're realizing actually all these values are popping out, like community, food, nourishment. You know, like eating locally and like from all the way from the farm to the plate sort of conversation. And then you can create your offering from there. How much of this are you conscious of as you're creating it, right? And how much of it is a byproduct of you just taking it one step at a time and just naturally following, okay, this becomes the next thing? Mm, well, I think it's more like the, the second thing, to be honest. Because yeah. uh, most of the last few years, I lived with the belief that everything would be fine. Everything mm-hmm. is always falling into place and everything that happens in the good and in the bad is great because it's a lesson for me to learn mm. and to bring home. Um, so it seems, or maybe it's just the way I see it, that everything falls into place all the time. Mm. So I tend to, I usually don't stress too much about the future. Or of course I have plans and you know I have goals that I work towards too. But um, yeah, there are beavers nights and the shifts of yoga has been just, you know, as you said, just by taking one step at a time and, and see what happens. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I really love that. And so the thing that's really present for me is also this whole conversation where you started in terms of, you know, you said that, yes, you know, we listen through our ears. We, some people are visual learners, but for you, it's definitely taste and touch. Yeah. And then realizing that part of yourself in the food and then also yoga is very much so about touch and the sensations of like the earth and being in your body. Um, And I guess in that space, like, do you see that as one of your strengths and is that intentional that you've doubled down on your strengths in that space? Mm. Yeah, like when, when it comes to yoga and, and body movement in general for me is like um, something I, I really need to do like, mm. in order to keep grounded. And um, um, it's one of those those rituals or routines that I, I do almost every day. Mm. Uh, I think Sunday is my only day of not moving the body. Uh, so either through yoga or through training or um, Qigong more recently is is very important for me. And yeah, probably it's just doubling uh, the strengths, uh, mm. but I really resonate with um, moving the body and tuning in with the um, subtle sensations in the body. And yeah. So mm. I think, yeah. yeah, so I want to try and take that conversation to having the conversation around something you and I were having a chat on offline here which was, you know, we talk a lot about spirituality and you and I have spoken about the elements and like, how you know, there's earth that's present, there's fire. Mm. And then especially in the whole field of Ayurveda, there's like mostly earth, fire, Mm. and the the vata, the wind and the water, you know, and they have their own relationship. And um, how much there's always a conversation in terms of trying to cultivate that which you don't have. Mm. You know, it's like trying to cultivate more wind and water, you know. And... um, for me, like I know I'm earth and fire. <laughs> you know, it's just like 100% just earth, fire, let's go. Um, and we were having this conversation where you're like, you know, 
yeah, maybe it's not always about what you don't have. You know, it's also about acknowledging what you do have and learning to double down on the strengths of that. Mm, yeah, that's definitely been my journey, especially um, since I started working um, more with the with elements. Since mm. I started doing a certain kind of work, uh, I was lucky enough to encounter, thanks to you, uh, an amazing mentor and teacher, and um, realizing how um, disconnected. I was uh, with Mother Nature, mm. uh, how my community, the hospitality community, was disconnected through Mother Nature, even though, as I said, the, the relationship with farmers start building up, which is, could be a way to reconnect mm. with, with uh, Pachamama, our, our planet. Um, so, yeah, since I started working on the elements, you know, I was always fascinated by this, the fluidity of water, you know, mm. like the movement, um, not having a strict direction, you know, mm. um, or air, like the simplicity of air, you know. Uh, but as more more I did the work, more I, I practiced, um, more I understood how, like you, brother, and this is why. <laughs> So abundant, my elements are hurt and fire. Like mm-hmm. I'm highly grounded person and um, highly passionate, passionate <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. And you know, burning through limitations is mm-hmm. one of my skills. So mm-hmm. every time I encounter a limitation in my life, I get excited mm-hmm. because I can go through just yeah. the fire, you know. And um, yeah, like the, the work is the the last. Believe me, the last six months with this kind of work has, has been life changing, you know, yeah. and definitely feel more connected uh, with um, our planet. Um, and even though we are in the city, you know, like, mm. uh, but every time we have the chance of reconnecting, getting out of the city, or re- even just by respecting, or even through food, you mm. know, like honoring the fact that the food comes from the earth, yeah. uh, honoring the water you drink. Sending prayers to the water, you know, like mm. this. Very important nowadays. Mm. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and so, in that, you know, like you walk, like you said, being so grounded, being earth, even this conversation is quite a, I want to say existential, but quite a nature based conversation, which uh, may not be the most uh, first topic of conversation in many circles, let's mm. just say that. Yeah. Um, and then you're going back into a space where, you know, you're integrating a lot of this with, or let's just f- like rewind back into your journey. Like you're currently what I would see as being like on the edge of understanding, like, okay, now it's like, okay, my strengths are earth and fire. And how does that translate to me and how I cook and how I show up and my movement practice, right? And all these sort of things. How do you navigate previously or even at present being on the edge of your curiosity Right? And what I see personally, and maybe I'm just calling things, um, being like a thought leader in your space, right? But then at the same time, interfacing with the challenges of other people's perceptions in that space that may not be supportive of the change that you kind of see as being intuitive. Mm. Mm. That's a good question. Well... Can you re- rephrase the, the question? <laughs> Absolutely. So the challenge of being misunderstood, mm. right, when you're consistently leading thought in a, in a particular space, right, because you're consistently coming up with these new models, these new ideas in terms of actually the conversation should be around vegan food, the conversation should be around vegetarian food, the conversation should be around eating locally, the conversation should be around organic. And it's like, wow, these are like six different massive conversations to have. And you're like, yeah, but it can be had on a plate. Mm. Right. So in that space, like obviously there is some level of people not understanding what you're trying to communicate Mm. because you're trying to have a conversation with people. Is it safe to say that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so those that don't, that don't understand you, how do you navigate your way through that process of being misunderstood? Like for me, as an example, the podcast exists and it Mm. helps me build a tribe. Right. So there's a tribe of like minded people that continuously tune in. We get to, and there's all these messages flooding back and forth like, this is really insightful, this is really instructed, sort of firms that belief. Mm. Right. But in the community that you're in, the space that you're in, like, yes, now you've built a certain amount of community in and around the work that you're doing. Mm. But at certain points along your journey, surely that would not have been the case. You know, you're the guy that's in this toxic environment, right? With this awareness of like, hey, like, 
you know, do you practice yoga? Do you have this awareness of like yourself and how you're conducting yourself, how you're holding your energy, how you're holding your space? Mm. How did you navigate through those challenges? Is it just bite your lip or is it through like just being really good at what you do and letting that mm. kind of well, inform the process? Yeah. Well, f- for me, it's very important to lead by example. And I l- really learned that um, the judgment of others is not going to affect my my purpose and mm. mission. So usually this a question that I I I don't have like right. So judgment of others just it used to it used to be a big thing for me. Like mm. used, I used to be terrified, but you know, like people judging. Yeah. You know? uh, but I also believe um, that there's a reflection of not truly believe yeah. believing what you do. Yeah. Uh, so I I think I reached a point in my life where I I simply believe. I love what I do and mm. also I believe that I'm not here to teach anyone or to say or to judge back anyone to say that what they're doing is wrong mm. I'm just here on this planet to share mm. um, that for me there is an unbecoming unbecoming of the figure of the leader the teacher and so I see more like a sharing like I share with you you share with me you take home what you think serves you mm. uh, because also People are at different points in their life, so there is a different uh, time in each each person's life where they're ready to mm, receive see. some information. So, yep. um, for me, it was a big leap of courage to start sharing, and uh, without attaching to the fact that someone could think, "Oh my God, what is this guy doing?" <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that's how I navigate through it. Uh, <laughs> It's amazing. And so I think that was that was really helpful. Mm. The whole piece mm. around judgments and like obviously just yeah, really letting that soften and go and allow I think even just the amount of creativity that it gives you permission to then explore mm. when you just surrender to yourself. Yeah. And so there's a lot that we can talk about in terms of, you know, energy and food. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what inspires you the most at the moment? Well, um, when you mention energy and food, like uh, it would be interesting to mention um, uh, an epiphany I had as um, as I was cooking one day, and um, I don't know if you ever heard about the water experiment. Yes, the yes, yes. Uh, I think we we tuned in on this yeah. before. Right, it would be interesting for the people listening to. We have great chats, by the way. <laughs> 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 but yes, please. Yeah, so the the experiment of this Japanese scientist, which I unfortunately don't remember the name, mm-hmm. was um, so he experimented in, um, with two different water bottles and he put them in two different rooms. And one room was playing, you know, heavy metal music. The other room was playing classical music. And mm-hmm. then eventually observed the molecules and the cells of the water and the uh, the ones that they listened uh, to um, heavy metal music were kind of can- cancer form, mm-hmm. and then whilst the one that listened to classical music were uh, like crystal uh, snowflakes kind mm-hmm. of shaped. Uh, so they inspired me a lot in, in the action of cooking. So I realized that um, my intentions while a cook is fundamental uh, to the end product. So, mm. um, I could serve the most beautiful food with the most beautiful ingredients, but if I'm angry, yeah. if I'm, uh, if I have stress and resentment within me, what, what, what am I gonna feed my people, or mm. my customers, my tribe, my community, my family? And um, yeah. yeah, this is why mom's food is always so good. <laughs> it's drenched in love and care. Drenched in love. Uh, so this is um. This is a conversation that's really dear to my heart because my yeah my dad as he was you know I grew up with him cooking mm-hmm. basically and he would be praying legitimately he's just a man of God and he would just be praying as he was cooking you know like stirring massive pots just praying 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 and uh, I didn't really you know how we were saying before you look back and all the dots line up I never really understood like I was just like oh that's his favorite pastime is prayer. And he's just doing that while he's doing his work, which is cooking, right? Mm. But I didn't link the two together. I didn't realize that, no, his food is amazing because he's consistently praying, you know, into the food, with the food, like that whole, his being and that energy. 
And um, <clears throat> one of the one of the, like so recently, you know, he's retired, and we've had some really deep conversations. And you know, being a father and always being a breadwinner for thirty five plus years, you know, being a certain way, you know, leaving the restaurant at two, three in the morning, coming back before ten, you know, consistently doing living that lifestyle seven days a week for. Yeah, so, you know, I kind of get the environment that, you know, you speak to. Um, There's this really interesting thing that when I spoke to him, I was like, you know, what made you finally leave? Because they kind of, he kind of retired once I graduated, you Mm -hmm. know, so I kind of saw that, oh, yeah, now that his son doesn't need support, he can kind of, you know, let go and rest a little bit. But I was like, was that really the case? And he reflected back to me, which was, he goes, actually, no. It's not about you, <laughs> which again was another good lesson for me. <laughs> you know, Amrit always thinks the world revolves around him. Um, but this was a few many years ago, and he goes, um, "Yeah, actually, what started happening was like he, he started getting shoulder pains, mm. you know, mm. from just stirring and like just cooking and like standing on his feet the whole time, and his body was complaining to him, you know, and he said it's very challenging." for him and he completely articulated it this way he said it's very challenging to create good food with love when you're not loving your body and this is what he said to me and I was just like holy shit like it's taken me ages to cultivate this level of awareness that who we are is is what things we do you know hence inspired evolution but that was such a that was a conversation that was completely present for him and that's why he sort of stepped away because he was just like I can't be passionate I can't pour my love and heart and soul into this the way that I love to and so it's time for me to sort of you know let this soften and let this go yes it's and this is in my in my humble opinion is because we really need to love ourselves first before we are ready to share our love and mm-hmm. this can be translated in a chefing kind of um, way like if you just work hard and you put all your love in your food and you know the passion the, the body unfortunately is limited so mm-hmm. you can abuse the body not for too long mm-hmm. you know, before it starts you know, s- sending signals. And mm. this is why a lot of chefs I notice, but also front of the house, house yeah. members, have a lot of issues in the body. Knees, yeah. wrists, shoulders, mm. uh, hips. RSI, so repeated stress injuries, you know? yeah. Yeah, and you know, all those, all those injuries, they uh, then become uh, psychosomatic, like, uh, issues mm-hmm. like energetically, you know, like uh, tight shoulders can make you um, more insecure, you mm-hmm. know, like every, everything in the body is a representation of something deeper. Mm-hmm. You know, as you strip the layers of the body, you can find the se- the echoes of the body are resonating in, mm-hmm. in a psychological level. So, for me, it's fundamental. Like this, is my priority number one to take care of my body first, mm-hmm. so I can offer the best I can through my medicine, through my work, through my service. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, and that's what I I preach also when I when I run a yoga a chefs of yoga workshop or talk mm. is that doesn't need to be yoga but we need to take care of, of the body through any sort of physical activity and through what we put inside the body. Mm. Um, a lot of chefs they eat sh- sorry very bad food as well mm. uh, and it's so hypercritical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that we cook the, all this amazing, amazing food. food, and then you know, one of these things you don't know about chefs is that when you go to their house, their fridges are empty. <laughs> Mine is empty too, but that's because I eat very fresh food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and this, and this is what I actually, this is what I was saying about the herbivorous nights are perfect representation of my lifestyle. Mm. So I I eat super clean six days a week. Yeah, so is. Again, something very important for me. I can make it tasty, but it's usually vegetarian base, which always vegetarian base and uh, very clean, uh, very soft and not aggressive cooking. So no grilling or no frying. Mm. Uh, so something that really makes me feel light mm. and uh, but still nourish me, nourishes me in terms of nutrients and macronutrients. Yeah. But then I, re- because I used to be a freak. And I used to do it, you know, like seven days a week. And I used to feed myself if I was having a drink. Or, yeah, yeah, hard on yourself. And yeah. then I realized how that was actually... Another form of toxicity. <laughs> exactly. Like, 
for a lot of people, it works perfectly and it's mm-hmm. fine. You know, there are people that thrive in, you know, being so strict and so disciplined, you know. Uh, for me, I realized it was important to have one day a week or maybe every couple of weeks where I let myself be. Mm. Um, sorry, not be, do whatever I feel mm. without, you know, following rules or, uh, of course, to a certain degree, so I still wouldn't go eat at a fast food or yeah. getting smashed or super alcoholic. So I, you know, the, I resonate yeah. with what you're saying and what I look at in those spaces, you know, because I'm quite fixed on what I eat as well for the most part. And then around there, I also look at, okay, there is also a space for my emotional needs, you know, like Indian food, maybe not the healthiest, but if I'm missing mom and dad, and then I will go eat, you know, curry with bread, exactly. you know, and it's like a whole ton of gluten in naan, but it's like, hey, like, this is a this is a, like this is actually nourishing for my soul. There's other aspects of me, you know, and maybe like you said, it serves some people not to have an emotional bond with food. Mm. Um, but there are other aspects of you, and learning to like soften is also an art. Yeah, yeah. And you, you don't you need to honor and respect where you come from, mm. you know, even if it's something you can't share all the time. Yeah, I I really resonate with that because being Italian and coming from <laughs> a country where food is such a a massive mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. is, you know, is important. Yeah. So, like having a pasta here and there, yeah. and pizza is make, makes me feel amazing, Nourished. reconnected yeah, with, totally. with my land, yeah. uh, which unfortunately uh, I didn't do when I was living there. Mm. You know, because I was, you know, living a very simple life. Mm. I wasn't as aware as I am now, and um, didn't understand the importance of your land you know, where you, you, you came. Mm. Are from where you grew up. Yeah. yeah. So on that, like you know, there's this whole connection to Italy that is so present, you know, for you because of the food and you know, like obviously being an incredible world class chef, and then obviously having that connection to a, a culture that is so deeply invested in food um, is a thing. But then I'd love to sort of just ask you, like, what does Melbourne really mean to you? Mm. You know, because this place is kind of special. It is very special, and if if you think about it, when I came here, I was yeah, just with the intention of staying six months, <laughs> make a fair bit of money and keep my traveling around the world. And then I end up being here for nine years. So yeah. I think Melbourne for me is the perfect representation of a new chapter. Mm. That was what I was looking for, a place where I could uh, be free from all my past um, ancestral and um, family and friends um, connections mm. which served me in the first part of my life but I think I was at a point where I needed a strong cut mm. so I could kind of start fresh without I was as I said quite afraid of judgment so I needed a place where I could start fresh clean slate yeah and you know developing other things I wanted to develop so mm. go deeper with the spirituality with the yoga with all and Melbourne is amazing because mm. it offers you all of this uh, yeah so yeah it's my new home like not pro- probably not the last uh, <laughs> but yeah the passion of travel still continues <laughs> I keep Melbourne in my heart very, yeah. very fond of it yeah, yeah it's, and uh, also I met so many amazing people here yeah all, all my new friends all the people I met through these nine years have mm-hmm. been the greatest teachers mm-hmm. I ever had yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so because there is a culture around here around food as well. Like Melbourne seems to be quite a quite a deep foody kind of city. Um, also, coffee is massive mm. here, and a dear friend of ours, Daniele, he's all about coffee, and mm. it's great to have both of you, <laughs> food and coffee sorted. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about nutrition. Um, mm. You know, and what it, what inspires you around nutrition. Um, I know sometimes when you are referring to nutrition, you're even looking at it as biohacking to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. So illuminate us around nutrition. Well, n- nutrition and, um, is something that's been growing quite strongly uh, in, the, in the last year, especially. So before, my only um, priority in, was about vegetarianism. So mm-hmm. there was, uh, unfortunately, I was in the mis- misperception, misconception that you know, if you're a vegetarian, you're going to be healthy. Mm. So I started diving into more refined uh, nutrition and um, also with me training a lot more. So I, I train almost every day. Uh, I don't practice in yoga studios anymore. So I have a home practice, but I hit the gym like almost every day, mm. five to six days a week. 
Mm -hmm. So I started feeling that the body needed more attention. Nutrition. Yeah, more attention. So I started uh, researching about micro, uh, macros, uh, blood testing every six months. Uh, supplements are a big thing uh, for me, uh, especially natural uh, supplements. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, um, having a lot of interest in uh, herbs, tonics, um, Chinese remedies, and um, yeah, and how to constantly improve uh, my health. Uh, Microdosing uh, recently has been also a game changer. Um, and it really fascinated me how mm. you know um, we can we can keep improving even mm. with the nutrition and this um, and this also why I, lo I love Melbourne and because yeah. it is freed up from uh, the traditions that I love from Italy for example or from Europe but then they will see all these crazy ingredients I use in my cooking and, <laughs> oh my god what are you doing my <laughs> <Fangul. laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's, I feel blessed when I'm in the city also for this because mm -hmm. there is so much accessibility to different sources, so many different sources. And, uh, um, you know, having some herbs from Chinese uh, medicine, some barks from uh, South America mm -hmm. or, you know, like the, the, the mix you can create with mm -hmm. that and the, the effect on your body is incredible. And this is why I think that I haven't got sick for long long time mm, good. yeah <laughs> yeah long long time i actually you know because i'm so in tune with my body and the way i feel i actually can feel the sickness when it mm. when it's when it comes mm. uh, when it start when it starts being in the body so i take maybe a step back and i don't train too hard but mm. i'm never being like oh my god i cannot go out or not runny nose coughing mm. and all this stuff yeah it's been many years actually so yeah, I think big part of it is nutrition. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you, the body is a temple, and you really are what you eat, what you put in your body. Mm -hmm. you know? I think I was talking with you once that also it's important to have those cheat meals here and there, mm -hmm. so the metabolism doesn't get too lazy. Mm -hmm. I think when you put clean food in your body all the time, you know the metabolism works. It's like that same so conversation easily. when you've got a turbo in your car and you don't redline it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the turbo starts to yeah exactly. disintegrate. Yeah. So I, as I said before, I like uh, uh, a cheat meal here there, mm. you know, to nourish the soul and make the body work a little bit mm. um, harder. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Mm. And so that's the nutrition piece. And then what keeps you like? Obviously, I know that you know you and I are both share this passion for. You can call it personal development, <laughs> growth. But it, yeah, growth. <laughs> but it really is a spiritual pursuit. It is. It is a spiritual pursuit, and I, I forgot to mention before how, for me, even food and cooking is a spiritual practice nowadays. Mm. And is how I, I unwind as I'm cooking because mm. this the connection is so deep. There is so much awareness in even just the way I move my hands or mm. chop a piece of onion or mm. the lesson I can find in peeling out, you mm. know, what it represents, you know, yes. you know, the journey is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I go through, you know, food because most of the time I'm alone in the kitchen, Yeah, you know, so I have a lot of opportunities to go deep with the thinking, you know, you know, yeah. mm. so what was the question again? Sorry. Just, uh, it wasn't a question. It was just a remark on okay. like our shared passion for personal development and oh, how yes. it's become yeah. spiritual. Yeah. I guess the question would be, you know, like, Yes, there's these inspirations around food. I think you're already alluding to it. Like, you know, yes, you, know, you were starting to train and your body started demanding more and more nutrition. Mm. Um, what drives your inspiration behind the spiritual development that then informs this whole process that you're going through? Is it just a natural curiosity? Well, I've always been like feeling in my life I was meant to do something more mm. and discover, curious and very fascinated about the unknown and um, but eventually, I realized at a point of my life that it was also feeding my ego, mm. and um, that's when I started exploring the fields of vulnerability as a man. And uh, that's when I when I started understanding the real strength and the real growth is in you know letting go of the achievement, attachment, mm. reaching 
Um, so there was a, a big shift that happened this, this year because you know when you realize that um, you know some of your actions. I'm not, not, not going to be too you know severe with, with my my past actions, but when some of them were driven by competition or by ego boosting mm. things, um, even the social media relationship was. Mm was toxic before and unfortunately because I'm a freelancer I need social medias you know like Absolutely. when you start understanding through awareness and spiritual practices and the, those things don't, don't serve anymore and you enter in a space of softness and vulnerability mm. as a man you, you drown yourself so much mm. and it's a, it was a big shift uh, this year so th- this is why I said at the beginning that this, this year closing so many circles. <laughs> so many circles. Yeah, it's an interesting yeah. conversation to have, isn't it? The whole vulnerability piece. Mm. Um, yeah, and just again and again, you know, like seeing that there can be, like it actually takes genuine strength to be soft, you know? Like, um, but there is so much strength in the softness. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just like oh, yin and yang. Stop it! <laughs> it's like this whole, yeah. It's a it's a really interesting, interesting walk to be a part of, and I see it creeping up in a lot of places. Like people are now like addressing toxic masculinity as a topic of conversation, um, and you know, in many ways, I still find. I'm somewhat challenged by the conversation around feminine and masculine mm. just because I feel like, for me, most people are coming to the conversation about masculinity and fem- like feminine energy as like a spiritual tool. Mm. And for me, if I had to rebrand spirituality, I think you and I have spoken about this before, if I had to rebrand, let's just say it in a really gross term, spirituality, I would just be like, okay, unity, you know, just is unity. And I oftentimes find that you know, some of these champions for mascul- masculinity or some of the champions for femininity are so segregating in their worldview that they're not really honouring the opposite and coming together. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That, yeah that, I resonate with that because I I see that how that can create a lot of divisions mm. and, and hate yeah. uh, instead of, you know, because we are all the same thing. Mm. We are a, a, a ilakesh. Yeah. You know, we are union. So mm. the feminine and masculine is within us. Mm. Uh, so I, I really agree with that. This, you know, some some people go a little bit too far, so far that you know puts shades on the other on the other energy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's, I think it's a very delicate topic. To, mm. um, but yeah, it is it is getting quite popular, which is good. Mm. You know, I uh, really. Really believe they is it's good that first things they go out mm. um, wide, wide, widely, yeah. and then we will find them as they happen. Uh, as they happen, so yeah. at least there is uh, a global awareness. Uh, is that same it. conversation you were saying previously about it doesn't need to be perfect by one yeah. person? Yeah. It needs imperfect action by a whole bunch of people to try and get the energy to get that momentum going in in the right direction. Yeah, fascinating. Fascinating. So one of my deepest passions and inspirations and the whole reason this inspired evolution exists, right, is this conversation around Dharma. Yeah. And uh, for a while, like similar to you, I've been on this journey of health and I think, you know, we've taken different approaches to it, but come, you know, many like this in many ways. Um, And the journey of health kind of led me to purpose which was really, when I first got there, I was like, this is really a mind boggle. Like, why is my purpose so fundamental to my health? Now, there's a whole conversation in there around stress because if you're stressed out because you're not on purpose, Mm. then your health is deteriorating, (laughs) right? And I really like to see the nature in that because, you know, if you're not living in an ordained way with the way that, you know, nature intended, then like any good fungus can reclaim you and use those carbon cells for really what the purpose was, you know, so like nature reclaims you and mm. that looks like dis-ease and then, you know, you're out of alignment. But if you stay in alignment with, you know, what is your purpose, then the nature and the vitality, the you, it arrives, <laughs> you know. So that's that's kind of my – and I thought I was alone in harboring this awareness, but I know you and I share this awareness on a really deep level. Um, but one of my fascinations was 
that actually at the core of the science of Ayurveda, right, which is Ayurvedic medicine, like the through thread of the whole thing is actually to facilitate your dharma, right? And your dharma is your walk in life, the way you, you know, yeah. And I think the big thing for me having you here today was just, you know, I have the blessing and I think just sharing this with, you know, those that are tuning in of how important uh, community is, mm. you know, and for me just walking life and, you know, we go away to meditation retreats, we spend time together, we're currently, he was over last night learning a dance for my wedding oh, yeah. together, <laughs> you know, and just like all these little pieces of like how important community is, but how much, I guess, just you mean to me in terms of like having a brother by my side that is consistently focused on on dharma and like actually i'm here life is a gift life is amazing what is the purpose of it or me or is there a purpose isn't there a purpose i don't know but how do i honor it to the best of my ability mm. is um is a massive fascination of mine that i feel blessed and privileged to be able to share with you and um yeah it's been it's been a real treat to be able to sit here and share some of you know, your walk and the insights that exist on your journey here. Um, but what does, what does to you your dharma look like? Like, what is it? I know the Herbivorous Nights are, are a big part of, yeah. like, really what it, what it looks like. Pur- purpose has been evolving over the years, to, if I have to be honest uh, with you. Um, but finally, I, um, I came to the conclusion this year, this year that mm. health is one of my biggest purposes. Mm. Because through health, then I can work on many other purposes. So mm. that's the um, core uh, value of mm. mine. Uh, health, growth. And um, through those values, then I can walk my path. With integrity, mm. authenticity, and responsibility and, and service. Mm. So, um, yeah, I feel also quite honored that we can share this this, this value. And I know how important they are for you. And uh, I think without those values, I can't really uh, feel I'm. I can give my best to the community, which mm. for me has become so important. So and now I'm talking of another community, not my. Uh, hospitality community, a mm. uh, community that now has become a family because, mm. as you know, all my parents, all my siblings, all my aunties and cousins are all back in Italy, and that's that's pretty hard, yeah. you know. Like yeah. when you live for twelve years far from your family, you know, and, and you you have you have some stuff miss, missing, yeah, and totally. you, know, yes. you yeah. and many other brothers, I found a community, and you know giving the best version of myself to my community, to mm. all those purposes and values which I just mentioned is very important. Mm. And um, also through community, uh, family and relationships, we think we can really find like crystal, crystal the, the gems, the gems, the gems. Yeah. You know, like um, one of my teachers, the, one of the biggest sharing uh, I, I know he doesn't like to be called teacher, but um, it's that you know we uh, you can practice all the yoga that you want. You can you know uh, go to all the meditation retreats that you want and do your breath or do your movement, you know. But then if you um, if you fuck it up mm. in your family in your friendships, like mm. what is the point? Yeah, and um, I like to spend just a couple of words on how important my last relationship has been mm. for all all of this. Mm. Uh, it's been the greatest teachers, the greatest teacher I mm. ever had. You know, um, bringing to surface all my shadows and allow me to face them and mm. grow. Mm. It's been like a real blessing. So um, I really, really believe that you know, first we need to walk with integrity and authenticity in our relationships. We can be your fiance, your mm. community, your 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 friends. Mm. Before then we can start going a little bit deeper with ancient practices or other stuff. So I always bring it back to the basics and simplicity. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that's really vital, just that conversation around why. You know, it's like all this personal development, why <laughs> you know, and uh yeah, I really resonate with that. It's like if it informs your walk and your walk is, you know, I think it's really profound what you're sharing is, yeah, like your connections with other human beings. Obviously, the earth and mm. the elements is vital, 
Um, but then also the other human beings is like where really the rubber hits the road, you know, like even money, you know, comes and goes, you know, but, uh, yeah, really like your, the people in your life, you know, it's very, once, you know, you erode some relationships, it's very hard to bring them back together, you know? And so, yeah, I think it's, it's really profound. Um, just that conversation around, you know, yes, health, yes, purpose, um, and getting clear on that, but why, you know, so you can be, yeah, someone that, you know, can hold that space for your family, for your community, for your loved ones, and learn to love in a better way. So before I wind things up, <laughs> um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh, well, there are a lot of things we could keep yeah, talking tell me. Huh? I know. Yeah, but, you know, I know we're at time... Conversations online. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't want I don't to... I know, yes, some stuff to do. No, extra. no, you're good. Tell me more. Um, but, yeah, like, it depends on what, actually. Or, or we can dive in a little bit more. Um, yeah. What fascinates you? What fascinates me? Mm. Like... Yeah, I think maybe one last uh, point we can touch on is the importance of creativity, yeah. uh, which is a little bit more lighter talking. And, sure. You know, something that is actually very present in my life. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe it's very important, especially as we age, to keep rewiring the, mm. the, the brain and Shit. our connections uh, yeah. in the brain, ne- neural, neural connections. So uh, I have... A rule and this is something I do every year mm. every year sometimes it's every two years because sometimes I really like these new things to learn a new skill mm. so uh, and this started as I came to Melbourne which is also why I love Melbourne yeah <laughs> there is so much stuff you this can place do. It screams vitality <laughs> there's so much creativity here yeah, yeah. so um, in Melbourne I did this pottery courses I painted for a couple of years mm. music has been always present yeah. in different forms um, uh, singing uh, recently has been magic mm. uh, actual magic tricks <laughs> magic tricks uh, which and then you know the beauty of living in awareness is that even through simple stuff like that mm. uh, you can learn yeah. a measurable lesson for example for, for me magic has been amazing not because i entertain people mm. uh, which is still quite quite nice mm. because i love making people happy laugh and smile and laugh. yeah but you know uh, the old magic tree for example went into uh, a dive deep into human psychology and mm. humans body language yeah so i love how when you know you live more in balance you can find all this preciousness even in simple and fun stuff like that so for me creativity is also to to um, learn uh, mm. something a little bit deeper you know yeah. having fun so yeah uh, yeah I think setting the intention for creativity is a is a really valuable one right because it's like in its own nature the universe is creative right and you know there's these conversations that God created us in his own nature you know and there's like that little like I don't know, like people are like, oh, so I'm a big white dude in a white cloud with a white beard. And it's like, <laughs> no, that's not God. Maybe I don't know, but um, but yeah, in that creative nature, the fact that we were created, you know, and um, just the whole conversation we're having around masculine and feminine before, just how potent your sexual energy is, you know, and just like what that really means is like how potent you are creatively, because that is your creativity, right? Your sexual energy is just purely your creativity and the creativity that exists there. And just, I, I love that you have the intention to continuously work with that because, you know, when we talk about vitality, you know, which is the combination of your health and purpose, when you're there in alignment, you experience vitality, I believe. The creativity is a fundamental expression of that, but right. also the fuel for that. You know, they're in this dance together because as long as you're creative, then you're serving because you are creating, that is the nature of the universe to be creative, to create. That's why. You know, we have kids. That's why you know mm. the journey goes on, and yeah, I think it's I think it's really profound. Yeah. And also, I think it's quite important to cultivate creativity in that way. So you do, you 
you're doing something in your life without the strictness, you know, mm. like it gives you so much freedom, you know, like I never had like a moment where I was either practicing music or cards where it's, ah, you know, those frustration mm. moments. Yep. So there is no attachment to the end goal, yep. uh, which is another great take home, mm. you know, and there's another, it's been another big game changer that the journey is so fun and mm. important when you let go of the <laughs> final goal, when you let go of the attachment. You know, yeah. I learned that also through like a couple of body injuries through yoga yeah. and you know that you when, raced recently, right? Yeah, it was two years ago. I had like a, a ten, ten, eight, ten months uh, yeah. wrist injury because I was obsessed mm. with handstanding mm. because all the yoga cool yoga teachers mm. I say cool but I yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they they were doing handstands on on social medias, and you know, like um, when then I attached myself to the goal, mm. you know, I would train it every day, doing everything I had to do, but then eventually, energetically, lead to injury because it wasn't done with the right mindset mm. and purpose. Yeah, uh, and you know, I haven't. I think I haven't been training handstand for a long time now, mm. and. You know, the other day I was practicing and, and I did like something that <laughs> I tried to do for a transition that I tried to do for years and just came so naturally. Just dropped you know, in. And there was, wow, when you let go mm. of the, you know, the importance of the journey, yeah. you know, the absence of frustration, you know, there's the rage, you know, when you can't get something. That's so important, you know, yeah. so important. It's a really interesting dance, isn't it, Paolo? Like the whole conversation around, like we, we, you know, I used to set goals, but now I still set intentions, right, and get really clear on what it is that I want to experience. And then, you know, the growth that needs to come in order to facilitate that experience, which is really inspiring. And then the contribution, making sure there's a good reason why I want that experience, you know, and it could be that it's just filling up my own cup. Yeah. But the, on that journey, the thing that really speaks to me, what you're saying is like one thing that I really had to learn is set the experience that is, you know, and flow states are a great conversation to have here, you know, because set the experience that basically helps you facilitate the process in mm. itself of the like rather than being outcome oriented be process oriented like okay so i want to learn to be an international speaker yes. right so it's like i want to learn to speak but like for me it means like having impactful meaningful deep conversations like this and then learning to have that with a greater audience mm. so that i can share you know this conversation further but the process looks like this right it's yes. like you and me sitting here right yes. and so like i love this process and when i'm on stage and having this conversation around flow all I say that flow for me is really it's when the being and the becoming are the same, you know. Like in this moment, I'm being someone that gets to have really yummy conversations, but I'm also becoming someone through sharing the podcast mm. further and with everybody that becomes this person that, oh, yeah, he has yummy conversations with people and he gets known for his yummy conversations somehow, somewhere. And it's not about the acknowledgement, but it's about spreading that ability to then have further conversations with more people, which is what I love doing. So being in this moment the person that is having the best conversation possible is then facilitating the the being so be being being becoming and then it's like yeah. who you're becoming and it's just like this this cycle of flow and i think the health and the purpose piece is like clicked into that as well right oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> just in agreement <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is. It is, and you know, like um, I, I like to share on that, that like a practice that I've been, you know, using like for the, the last couple of years. Mm. Through, uh, thanks to one, one uh, uh, other of my teachers, which is you know, like picturing yourself in ten years. So, mm. not, like setting is important, as you said, like setting goals. Mm. You know, very clearly. So I always, you know, uh, once a week or every couple of weeks, take my journal and write down who I want to become in mm. 10 years. But then I let the flow state lead me there, mm. you know, and having the freedom of flowing mm. but still being centered. Mm. It's an interesting dance, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and, you know, understanding the center is not something straight. It's not something that leads you straight. Mm. There is softness and there is flowing in mm. centering and grounding. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It was uh, another big piece. Yeah. yeah, I find it really fascinating because even like as you're articulating that center, like it, 
I was having this conversation, coaching conversation today, which is the only really way I can articulate this. So, you know, our relationship with time is really fascinating, right? Because we're in this space where our consciousness interacts with time in such a way that we experience the moment. But when you start delving into quantum, it's like time doesn't exist and your being is quantum apparently, right? And so then it's like, but wait, well then what happens for time? It's like time is infinite and it's just now. So it's one big eternal now that you're experiencing in. And this is where the conversation around regression healing happens and, Mm. you know, influencing your future and praying for guidance and perhaps where synchronicities come from. This is my belief. That's where I believe synchronicities come from. Like if I sit here and pray for guidance, you know, tomorrow there'll be a synchronicity. It's like, oh, synchronicities. It's like, yeah, but you prayed for that. Your quantum self exists beyond time, right? But the manifest it. Yeah, right. The interesting piece for me is like, you know, we somehow have this linear relationship with the moment, with time that seems to expand through this lifetime that we call like a and we draw a lifetime. We draw like a straight line. You know, it's like this year, this year, this year, this year. But then in and around that, somehow flow isn't rational. No. Yeah, but the mind is rational, so flow can be such a hard thing to drop into because, like you said, the center is not straight up and down. Yeah, our relationship with time happens to be pretty linear, pretty up and down, so we see things as up and down. But when you're flowing, sometimes it's like things don't make sense, right? And like, it's like your head's like, why the fuck are you doing this, Amrain? You know, and it's like, well, this is what the intuition says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I feel like we've been... Touching so many different. <laughs> I, 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 I said from the beginning the episode can be chop suey. Yeah. So <laughs> I feel yeah. bad for the. Lady. <laughs> this is Paolo is more considerate than I am. <laughs> but hopefully there is something to take home. From yeah, from definitely. This conversation. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I think um, it's been really insightful. Just uh, fundamentally, the inspired evolution as a as a bedrock is you know stemmed from me wanting to be inspired to evolve, you know, and learning to walk a life that is in alignment with my passions and, you know, what I deemed at the time to be like a fixated thing, which was purpose. And now, as you share in this conversation, purpose is ever evolving, you know, and one of my biggest insights is that health and purpose are the same thing, which is exactly what you were saying, you know. And, uh, yeah, so in that space, you know, you've consistently been inspiring me, you know, on this journey. So it's been a real blessing to be able to have you here, share the insights. And I know for those listening in, it's like he's saying yes and he's saying yes. And this is a very yes, 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 yes episode. <laughs> but we are two very dear brothers. And so this is, this is, this was uh, inevitable. And, um, but yeah, just, uh, for those tuning in, like if you haven't and many of the community have just because we have such a, a beautiful community for those that haven't tuned in to your offerings around food and yoga. Um, firstly, for me, I'm biased. Please go try the food. <laughs> <laughs> Best place to connect with Herbivorous Nights is is uh, my Instagram, but also my website is going to be finished by the 10th of January. Awesome. The very important date. Okay. For you. Yeah, I'm getting married <laughs> on that day. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, should be ready by then, uh, awesome. uh, which is www.paularlotta.com. Yeah. Uh, uh, otherwise, my Instagram is usually, yeah, uh, my, I send all the details for dates and uh, workshops or classes. Perfect. That's happening. Perfect. So we'll add all that into the show notes for those that want to get in touch. And for those that are chefs that are listening in and they want to connect to Chefs of Yoga. Also, we have um uh, Instagram page for Chefs of Yoga mm-hmm. and site under construction. So it's all happening next year. Yep. Uh, it's a chefs.off.yoga mm. uh, for the Instagram. And um, yeah, also we're starting actually next year to run, uh, we're aiming for weekly um, classes. Classes. So awesome. now I have a, a good a good team yep. of I super ground the teachers that have an experience in hospitality. So mm. we definitely want to reach out to more restaurants. Uh, we have, we picked up a few more restaurants for next year, mm. uh, but also um, uh, improve the volume of community classes so we can really work on building a stronger, a stronger group, a stronger community. Bringing people in hospitality yeah. together to have that yeah. conversation. That's amazing. Yeah. Right? And then That's why amazing. not, you know, expand to other fields, their needs. Mm. Uh, 
we see when the, as, as always I live with the belief that everything is going to be good <laughs> blessings brother I want to take this moment in time to thank you for coming along today um, to share to be open to be vulnerable to yeah show up soft and have that strength to do that as always which yeah is such a blessing for me to receive and as always it's not just about this present moment even though it, maybe this is all we have um thanking you for just all the work that goes into the information that we get to share and revel in today, you know, like um, I know for myself and just being connected to you so deeply that, you know, it has been a, a lifelong journey, you know, and so I'm just really grateful for you putting in all the work to have this informed conversation today. And as always, wishing you all the best <laughs> for everything. Um, last question, by no means least question. It's metaphysical in its nature. Uh, beyond the name, beyond the food, beyond the yoga, beyond the movement, mm. perhaps even beyond the body, uh, who are you? <laughs> That's the hardest question of the world. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. I think I'm just an uh, eternal kind of kid. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, like just one of like a very simple person, mm. like um, that just want to do the good. Mm. Yeah, but sim simple and kind of child mm. oriented. Like yeah, Simplicity. yeah. Like if I we strip out all those uh, labels, you know, the chef, the yoga, yeah, or every everything comes back to. But I think every. The, the problem is I think everyone is you yeah. know, uh, deep inside, you know, the reconnection with our inner kid. Yeah. I think, yeah, uh, simple, simple, happy kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Love of the Inspired Evolution and sharing the Love of the Inspired Evolution. If you feel like this content may support, has supported you or may support anyone else that you know may resonate with the content of it, please share away and share the love around. Thank you guys so much. And to stay up to date on whatever's coming out with the Inspired Evolution, please subscribe. There's all these links in the bio for you to tune into the episodes and all these different platforms just so the message can get to you and your loved ones. Thank you so much for all your love and support. Stay inspired. Tool of Bowl.